In this video, we're going to talk about how to implement sophisticated logical tests in MATLAB. Our objectives are to introduce all of MATLAB's relational and logical operators. So far in the course, we've had kind of a piecemeal approach, as needed approach, to introduce some relational operators such as greater than, less than, etc. And we're going to just summarize all of that and complete the picture with the logical operators in this video. Then we want to practice using combinations of arithmetic, relational, and logical operators to build more sophisticated logical tests that we can use to, in the next video to control the way in which commands are executed in an M file. Let's summarize the relational and logical operators. We've pretty much looked at all of the relational operators to date. We have greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, is equal to. Note the double equal sign is what distingu distinguishes this from the assignment operator. Uh, and then not equal to is the last one. And then we have three logical operators that we can use as well. The logical operators are and, or, and not. So and returns true if both statements on either side of the operator are true. Or returns true if both, if either statement on either side of the operator are true. And not would return true um, if everything next to the not symbol is false and then it just flips the sign basically you can think of this as a just flips the logical value all of these logical operators and the relational operators return a 1 for true and a 0 for false one thing you might see here that you're probably wondering about is the double and and the double or the or by the way this is shift backslash on the keyboard to get that vertical line. So shift backslash on the keyboard will give you the or and then you need two of them for the double or. The double symbols here are called what MATLAB calls the short circuit versions and the short circuit, what that means is that it won't execute the entire statement if the first operator is false. So as soon as it knows that something is false, it will stop evaluating the full logical statement. That will make more sense as we get more into this. But the bottom line with the double short circuit is that those operators can be more efficient more efficient operators for when we're dealing with scalar variables. So if we have scalars in the code and we're using logical operators with scalars, usually we want to use the short circuit operators, double AND or double OR. The single AND and single OR, these still work. They still work for scalars, but MATLAB will give you a warning um, just recommending the double AND or the double OR if it thinks that you're using scalars in your function. So let's look at the order of operations. The order of operations is as follows. First is arithmetic and functions, just like before. So we have parentheses, then functions, exponent, multiplication, and division, executed left to right, and addition and subtraction executed left to right. So those are always executed first in evaluating a logical text. Evaluating a logical test. Next are the relational operators, and those relational operators, for example, greater than, greater than, equal to, equal to, those are all have equal precedence. And all operators, just like addition and subtraction and multiplication division, 
if they have equal precedence, they're executed left to right. For the logical operators, they do not have equal precedence. They have a specific order. The first is the not. Not gets executed first. Second is the and. And third is the or. So when you're writing logical tests, you need to keep note of that order of operations. So what we're going to do now is just learn more about how these work by looking at a series of examples. Here's the first example, common programming task. We want to determine if a variable x has a value between and including 5 and 10. So the correct MATLAB expression to do this <coughs> is as follows. x less than or equal to 5 and x less than or equal to 10. Let's look at the order of operations for how this is evaluated. So suppose uh, x equals 7, then what MATLAB will do is say is 7 less than or equal to 5, that will be true, and then next we'll do the next relational operators, because that's the order of operations, is 7 less than or equal to 10, so here we'll put the 7 in here, and that would be true, and then the AND checks are both sides true? So 1 and 1 returns a 1 or true for and. Let's try another one. How about x equals 12? So for x equals 12, it would go through and say, is x greater than or equal to 5? The answer would be true. Is x less than or equal to 10? The answer would be false. And then we'd have 1 and 0. And those aren't both true, so this returns a false. Now, you might, often people are tempted to write something like this for this logical test. 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10. Now, this is a perfectly valid mathematical statement. Perfectly valid mathematical statement, but let's look at what happens when we try and evaluate it in MATLAB. So again, using x equals 12, again, for this logical test, is 5 less than or equal to x, and the answer is true, so that's a 1. Now, we don't have the AND operator, so it's just going to evaluate these left to right. So now it's going to ask, is 1 less than or equal to 10, and again, the answer is true. So you can see this is an incorrect result. And the incorrect result comes from not fully understanding how the order of operations works here. It's very important that you use this correct form for simple range checking like this, not something that would be the equivalent of what you would write in math. So I'll draw a big line through that one. Let's look at the second example. Here we'll say, determine if a variable x is a positive integer. So we'll check two things here. First, x equals, is x equal to round x? Well, if x equals round x, remember round x rounds to the nearest integer. So if x is equal to round x, that's checking if it's an integer. And is x greater than or equal to 0? That's checking if it's positive. So we can imagine trying some values here. 5.3, we would get, for 5.3, we would get, is x equal to round x? No, false. Is x greater than or equal to 0? Yes, true. And then are these two both equal to 1? That's what the and is asking. No, that's false. Let's try another one. Let's try x is equal to negative 2. Is x equal to round x? Yes, true. Is x greater than or equal to 0? No, false. 1 and 0, false. We can try x equals 20. <coughs> is x equal to round x? Yes, true. Is x greater than or equal to 0? 
Yes, true. And the sum result 1 and 1 gives us a true. And what I'd encourage you to do is try these out in MATLAB and you'll see that MATLAB gives the same results. But it won't give you the intermediate steps. It's important to practice doing these intermediate steps like I'm demonstrating here so you can make sure you understand how these logical tests are working so you can write your own. Let's try another example. Determine which elements in a vector x have a square root that is an integer with a value between 1 and 10. Okay, so we're going to determine which elements. So that key right there is what tells us to use the find <coughs> command. And so what we'll do is first find where is the square root equal to an integer. So here we take the square root <coughs> and we use the same test as before x equals round x. This is just like x equal equal to round x. But now instead of x, we're using square root of x. So square root of x equal equal to round x is, that's asking, is the square root of x an integer? And then the next thing, just like the <coughs> first example, is 1 less than the square root of x, less than 10. And again, this is math syntax, not MATLAB. Okay, so here's another example of a logical test. And let's look at one more example here. Count how many elements and the vector x are greater than the square of the corresponding element in the vector y. Again, the operator acts element by element and returns a 1 or a 0. So we can use the sum command. This is basically going to count how many 1s in the array, or sorry, in the vector. that we get from this logical test, which is going to output a vector of ones and zeros. So we're asking one, is x greater, <coughs> is the element of x greater than the square of the corresponding element in y? Or is the element of x less than the square root of y? If either of these is true, we'll get a one in this vector, and then we'll sum up all of the ones. And again, this one, I would again say, try it out. And make sure you understand how all these logical tests work, and there's an opportunity in the self-assessment to try some more.